So, another Across the Spider-Verse video. Don't worry, this is the last one, I promise. The movie is just that good. Now then, as much as I love the antagonistic relationship the different main characters played in Across the Spider-Verse, none of them actually played the villain role. And that is because the role is taken perfectly by Spock. Across the Spider-Verse, in my opinion, did not just elevate the writing for its main characters or heroes, but it also created what I'll call the most morally justified villain in modern day animation. And I say this not to add to the hype train, but to actually sell a point that Spore represents a clear example of an ideal or perfect villain. And we're going to explore the reasons why I say so. Now if you follow this channel, you know we don't play with definition. So a villain is the opposite of a hero. That's all. <laughs> no, it's not. A villain is the antagonist of your story whose motivations and actions oppose the protagonist and drive the plot of your story. And the main point people forget when characterizing villains is the fact that a villain is usually compelled by a desire to commit acts of cruelty and immorality. You know, the usual I'll kill a person kind of stuff, not just antagonizing the protagonist. Now that one is out of the way, the first reason out of three that makes Spots the ideal or perfect villain is his backstory. Now as much as a seven year old kid could have clearly told you that, this is actually the key to any good villain. A compelling backstory is capable of pulling audiences into the story and drawing a sense of humanity to the narrative. Compelling backstories is a reason why we sympathize with villains despite their crude end goals or actions. It's the reason why Syndrome is looked at as the first saving grace of modern day villains. Or why no matter how Dr. Doofenshmirtz might want to twat the adventures of Phineas and Ferb, people still sympathize with him because of the way he grew up which almost justifies his narcissistic actions. Backstories makes for memorable villains. Not maybe the main reason that makes villains memorable but we'll actually get to talk about what makes villains memorable but backstories do play an important role in this so we're in the wonderful part of the video where i tell you to subscribe and like thank you if you choose to do so now onto the video now then spot's backstory is really unique in a sense where it intertwines with that of the main character which adds to the overall dynamic between them Spot's creation was as a result of Miles taking out the Collider. And even before that, Miles' radiation spider incident was as a result of Dr. Jonathan, aka Spot, bringing a spider to Miles' universe, which bit Miles. This I find unique because by making their backstories intertwine, you kind of personalize Spot's later actions. Now, he's not just being compelled because of some traumatizing childhood or maybe not being recognized, but he's being compelled by the actions of the ignorant main character or hero. This might be slightly similar to Syndrome's case, where you have a hero kickstarting the villain's arc, but instead of a spoiled brat trying to play the villain, you have a man that got his life ripped away from him from the actions of our wonderful superhero. Now that's not to say Dr. Jonathan was purely righteous before he became Spot. No, he wasn't. He did help Kingpin to create the Collider and he did ruin the timeline of some universes by taking out the possibility of them having having Spider-Man to protect them. So he isn't fully righteous. But that doesn't take away the humanity of his backstory, which in turn affects his later actions. Speaking of actions, let's transition to the second reason why I find him to be the ideal villain, and that is his morality. When I say morality, I mean the driving force towards his maniacal behavior, the reasons for the villain's actions. Now, as much as Spot's backstory might be reason enough for Spot to act that way, the people of Across the Spider-Verse decided to add one more reason to make him perfect, to make him human in a sense. And that theme is respect. Spot's reason to become Mouse's arch nemesis was not just because of revenge, but it was also respect. Spot had these feelings whereby he wanted Miles to acknowledge him as the strongest. Miles took Spot for granted and Spot did not like that, so he decided to change, to become not just a villain but the 
villain. One who he said will make Miles stronger. Sport hated being called the villain of the week. He wanted to be the villain that was feared before taking his revenge. I find this absolutely brilliant screenwriting. Giving a villain multiple motivations all in all to drive to one point. Revenge. So as much as his reasons to act this way was cause Miles took everything away from him. You know his backstory. He also wants to gain Miles's respect and fear to then accomplish his revenge. It almost seems like he wants to fully earn his end goal rather than just getting it. Now with that, the last reason why I think Spots is the ideal villain is his dynamic with Miles or hero villain dynamic. All this that I spoke about boils down to this. Character dynamic is the relationship characters share on screen. This makes for memorable scenes and dialogues that are timeless. In this case, we are focusing on hero villain dynamic. Hero villain dynamic is the main ingredient for memorable villains like I spoke about in the beginning of the video. Hero villain dynamic makes the audience become alert when they observe that these two characters are sharing the same scene. It's why whenever we see Alucard and Alexander share the same screen, there is this eerie feeling that something is going to throw down despite most people knowing how overpowered Alucard is. You still know Alexander is going to put up a good fight. Now then, you understand that the hero villain dynamic represents the relationship your hero and villain share. So if there is no unique link between these two elements in storytelling, you might have all the cool fight scenes and action sequences, but the dialogue might seem spineless. I find the hero villain dynamic Miles and Spot share to be very strong because the main reason for that is their backstories intertwining. There is this sense of closeness between both of them. This made for some some really good dialogues in the movie. Not only that, I really like this scene where Spot becomes his completed self. You could feel that there is a change in the tone of the story. Spot is no longer this sarcastic clumsy villain and now he has evolved and transformed into this perfect villain capable of fighting the almighty Spider-Man. And you could see it in Miles's reaction. Miles knew that this isn't the villain of the week anymore. This was the Spot. Okay, thanks for watching the video. Hope you all liked it. Um, hopefully, this is my last Spider-Verse video. Okay, then subscribe and like if you haven't done so. God loves you and I love you too. Bye-bye.